Okay, we're here again today with Dave from NYC Pain MD, and we have him back again because um, basically popular demand. Everybody loves him and the great information with him. Um, NYC Pain MD has two clinics, medical clinics in New York City. Um, he's going to talk about those. Um, and and Dave is not a treating physician there. He's he's the new patient coordinator. And he he explains the treatments and he sets things up and he's a wealth of knowledge and information about these treatments. And the best thing about him is he, he knows everything about them, um, but he, he explains it in a way that everybody can understand. And today we're going to talk about back pain because... NYC Pain MD is 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 really known and they got popular for treating knee arthritis and they had tremendous success with that and and they've been really swarmed with people for that um, but they're also swarmed with people for back pain and um, um, they actually did a recent article about the NYC Pain MD formula and over the years of, of treating countless patients and and a lot of success they've they've come up with with a quote unquote formula they use to um to treat back back pain with great success and the article hit and and they got a ton of questions um about it and about the back pain and how this works and there's a lot of people that want help so dave is going to talk about the the formula today and he's going to talk about how they help back pain um, and he's also going to give you an opportunity to see um, if they can help your back pain. Um, so stick around for that. Um, so Dave is on now. And uh, could you tell us a little bit more about about how NYC Pain M MD, they came up with this formula and what what it is and why why you guys are having so so much success with with back pain there? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me today again. Um, uh I guess we could talk about the general formula formula or approach we use, and then we'll get into like some of the detailed questions we've been getting about back pain. Because I know we mentioned it on that we'd have a talk about the back pain programs uh, on a couple of our arthritis webinars, and then there's a lot of emails coming in and say, "Hey, what do you guys do? I've heard about this. I've heard about that. What do you think, etc." And again, I just want everybody to know that I am not a, a treating physician at this point in the facility. I'm well versed in most or all of the treatments, but you can't take anything I say as a recommendation or as a medical uh, the discussion uh, from a physician, but just general information um, to see if you kind of fit within there and it might be appropriate for you. And of course, we're going to give everybody an opportunity uh, to talk about how we have our special no cost screening program. We'll put up a website, we'll put up a phone number and a way to contact us um, as we go through this. But um, let's kind of get through this information to see if we're a good fit for you and, and we'll go from there. So, you know, the first thing that every doctor should do or every facility uh, is make sure that they're properly uh, taking on the right cases. Um, and what does that mean? In other words, you have to screen your patients. So the first thing a patient has to do is obviously call and set up one of these screenings, but in screening, there has to be some detailed questioning about the patient's history, their general health history. What ha have they really tried? Um, frankly, some patients come in and may have a particular issue, whether it's the back, the knee, the hip, the shoulder, headaches, migraines, neuropathy. And frankly, they've done nothing. They've tried nothing yet. They haven't even taken but an ice pack to a painful shoulder or taken an Advil or a, a Tylenol or two for their knee pain, or they haven't done any stretching for their back pain, uh, or they haven't tried really good chiropractic care, or what's great for back, spinal decompression treatments. They haven't done a darn thing. And so those patients need to go back and do some conservative care first. And of course, we'll guide them in that. Um, patients have to understand that you can't leapfrog to more involved, complex, expensive procedures when you haven't even tried some really simple basics. So we don't want to take on patients whose conditions are not, in, in a sense, severe enough to really require the level of expertise and care that we involve. Sometimes there's a lot of simple things you can do to help with pain. And those are the things you should do. You'll save a lot of time. You'll save a lot of money. And you don't have to go through all these procedures. So, so there are those that are clearly, clearly 
uh, not a candidate because their condition is too mild. There are those that are have let their problems get so severe, Brad, that it's so severe. They are so um, um, degenerated. They're so damaged that sometimes we just know to do our procedures. The doctors will know. I don't think we'll even make a dent in this problem, even with our sophisticated approaches and all the different options we had, of course, which we'll talk about. We'll talk about the knee pain. We'll talk about it with back pain. And these cases just need to be referred out to various uh, surgical uh, uh, providers to make a decision. And so, so that's important. Like who we don't take on because they need to do more conservative, easier things. Uh, one, another type of case is that that's so severe that it makes no sense. But of course, there's a whole bunch of people that have tried the conservative care and failed. They certainly don't want to get surgery. And many people who end up in surgery should not have been there to start. It's completely um, over the top or too aggressive in, in, in our doctor's eyes and in my eyes, I guess I've heard it too. But there are those that we can put together programs that, that can be um, very helpful for those patients. And I think that's the important thing in consultation um, to kind of determine if you're, you're in the right ballpark. Now, of course, step two of the formula is to, to have a proper examination of that body part that's hurting. So our expert docs are very good at this. They're going to watch patients move, go through range of motion examination, special orthopedic tests. They may require an x-ray, which we offer right in our facility. Some patients even need to go out for an MRI if they haven't had one. So no decision will be made on the spot. So it's got to be very thorough, you know, workup and diagnostics. And these are not necessarily dramatically time consuming, but they, they do have to be done. And then from there, the doctors can sit down and say, hey, here, here's where we are. Here's what you've tried. And here's step one, step two, step three, step four in a logical and consistent manner. The one good thing about our facility too, and we've talked about this, is that we take that extra step out, extra multiple steps, uh, where you have to go out to another facility to do a procedure. The vast majority of procedures we offer, and many uh, say interventional procedures for pain that are offered, you don't have to go to a hospital to go to use their facility. You don't have to go to a fancy surgical center. This is not only stressful for a patient going through that whole mess, and these uh, are kind of intimidating centers, it's very expensive. Some of the hospital fees for surgical uh, suites to use procedures for say back procedures or knee procedures, and we're not talking about surgeries, are you know amazingly high. And so in our facility, one of our goals is to try to help the system by cutting that out. If you don't need a surgical facility or a surgery center or a hospital, most of our procedures can do right in our in-office treatment suites. We have uh, four or five advanced fluoroscopic CMs. We have advanced ultrasonic. We have a radio frequency procedures. We have everything that you need for the most part. So this is part of the formula in delivering the right care to the right person at the right time. And it sounds simple, but the truth is somehow the medical world has got off track with this. So I think, you know, that that's the... Um, discussion of the formula. And, and I think most important too is every case is individual. We have so many patients calling and say, hey, I have this, I have that, can you help me? And the answer is usually every case is different. You cannot compare one case to another. It may sound the same. It may sound like you have similar issues as many other patients, but you need to just get in front of the doc. And again, and again we'll talk about how you get these screenings at no cost as we go through this, uh, our, our discussion today. Yeah, it's it's really important here to make a point of that um, everyone's individual. Um, you can't get guarantee the results and stuff. But also, one of the reasons you guys have such major success is is your screening and evaluation. You're you're only accepting the patients you feel you can most likely help, and and the patients that you feel that you, that you can't help. Um, you're referring them out and, and you're, you're, you're taking them by their hand and trying to find the best possible doctor and solution for them, even if it's, even if it's not you, correct? Correct. Correct. And even the other day, there was a patient who, um, he, uh, he had been to, he had a very bad back problem and, uh, I even read his MRI report. I can't read an MRI. I'm not training it, but he had all these herniated discs and all this damage and, um, you know, he had had a couple epidurals without absolutely 
any response at all. We'll talk about why that happens. And so, uh, and I was reading his evaluation and, and he had most rotated to the left. And the truth was, even though his MRI showed lots of damage to the herniated disc, he was diagnosed with a sacroiliac, that's the left lower hip where the, the hip bone meets your tailbone and a, and a, and a fifth lumbar facet uh, a problem. And he started the first part of what we call a, a, a radio frequency program. We did a diagnostic block. I mean, this guy got off the table feeling 75% better. And the reason that happened was because the prior doctors, I'm sure they're excellent, they read the MRI, they assumed that the pain was coming from the herniated disc. They injected for a herniated disc, but it didn't help. So obviously the disc is not causing the pain. Amazingly, uh, even we, we were a little surprised. He felt so much better after a diagnostic block. Uh, you know, he was, he was aggravated at the other doctor. He was happy we're on the right track. So he's going to follow up what's called, we'll talk more about a radio frequency uh, treatment where you actually put radio frequency waves in around the nerve and the joint to block the pain. And that can be very long lasting and we'll, we'll get more into it. So, so that's just an example of how really listening to the patient and um, you know, not being so guided only by an MRI uh, and being guided by the whole, the whole picture when you evaluate a patient. Yeah, and, and you guys have a big thing too is you guys have multiple treatments um, all, all under one roof in the one clinic there. And most of the time, if, if, if a patient wants these treatments, they have to go to a clinic individually to get them. So, so they'll go somewhere to get one, one of these treatments. And, and then if they want a, a different one, they have to go elsewhere and another doctor and, you know, the case notes are passed on and this, and that, but at NYC pain MD, you guys have everything there under, under one roof and therefore Everyone's a collaborative team working together to help the patient. They're discussing it together. The treatments are are you know all there. That you know they don't have to get in their car and drive some somewhere else and deal with insurance there and deal with a doctor who doesn't know this doctor and this and that. And to me, that that seems like not only a huge um, uh, benefit as just just as far as stress and time and hassle, but but. I would think I would think the results are most likely going to be better when there's a whole team there working and and all of these treatments are are possible under the same roof. Right. I mean, I would agree. I think that uh, while medical care, everyone's so individual, like we talked about, you can have varied responses. But what you want to do is create the best environment and the best collaboration to try to get the best results. That's the best we can do, but I would agree that sometimes there's so much uh, disintegration amongst uh, cases that um, you may not get the best results. And you know, part of getting well is uh, having a good experience and not being stressed during it. So you have the proper hormones and body chemistry to get the best overall results. So that that is part of our mantra, and hopefully patients are getting that that level of uh, overall well-being and um, less stress and all the things that get the insurance company themselves. There may be their personal care coordinator who doesn't tend to care much about you. They may have a doctor who's even of a different discipline. It's not unusual for us to be talking to or having what they call a peer-to-peer -peer conversation with a doctor who's not even an expert in the particular procedures. So there's already enough cooks spoiling the broth as it will. So, you know, definitely having all this stuff under one roof, making it available to patients, it, it, it's definitely a better experience for a patient overall. But in regard to back pain, you know, one of the things with what we offer is uh, certainly some patients, we do typical standard, we do offer epidurals, but they can be done in office, they can be done with the most sophisticated um, fluoroscopic imaging uh, and approaches. But there are some patients that need other things. And what's very common is, I believe, uh, this misdiagnosis because uh, there's a herniated disc on an MRI. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the things that have come out over the years about MRIs. If you took an MRI and took a subset of men, uh, 40 to 65 years old, with no back pain, over half of them would show a herniated disc on an MRI. Uh, clearly, 
if a herniated disc causes back pain, all of them would have back pain. So if you have back pain, so now going in reverse, if you have back pain and you have a herniated disc, it might be the cause of the pain, but then again, it might not. So this is very important as we talked about that one patient, really analyzing the whole picture, not just the MRI, but physical examination, the positions uh, and, and motions that cause pain. So you don't waste time. Eventually you could figure out, but why waste time and money on expensive procedures? You want to try to get to the source as fast as you can. Uh, and this is similar to the findings in, in arthritic joints. Uh, some patients uh, have no arthritis on an, on an x-ray, but clearly examination reveals they do. So if you don't show it, if you're going just by the x-ray, you may not provide the right arthritis care. So there is a lot in, in, in the whole ball game of evaluation. And sometimes this is not always, but it, it is missed quite often uh, in facilities that kind of gloss over this stuff. I mean, if you go to a surgeon for uh, a bad back, he, he's not going to be thinking much, and I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong, but their thought is surgery. So if there's procedures that could have helped, and they didn't look at the prior care in detail, and they didn't look at the overall picture, they're going to cart that, that person off to surgery, which is ungodly expensive and quite traumatic and, uh, you know, doesn't always work. So, um, but what we offer for back here, so if an epidural is inappropriate. One of the very popular procedures, because there's an awful lot of this sacroiliac damage, people like golf and rotate and play tennis and stand all day. And uh, they actually have joint damage, joint arthritis, joint nerve pain, sacroiliac. So we do a procedure called the radio frequency procedure, which is done in two parts, a diagnostic block, and then they put radio frequency probes. And one of the newest thing that patients are asking a lot about is doing regenerative medicine for the back. And um, uh, you and I were discussing, I believe, on one of our webinars, uh, briefly, this uh, article that came out about Jack Nicklaus, the uber-famous golfer, who said he's taken 10 million golf swings and finally had some stem cells, fat-based stem cells, put into his back. He went all the way to Germany. And uh, he did very well, which is great. But the fact is, we can do something very similar here, right in the New York area, right in our downtown clinic. And, um, you know, it, it, it's relatively... Um, He's easy to do, and you don't have to take a trip to Germany, which could take you, you know, weeks on end and cost you tens of thousands of dollars in travel. So these are all the things that are available. Platelet-rich plasma is now being applied to joints. And, you know, sometimes you need one of these. Sometimes you need all of them to get the best results. And sometimes you need to combine it with physical rehab. That great procedure the therapist and chiropractic medicine doctors do is a procedure called non-surgical spinal decompression where they put you on a really advanced form of traction that de-weights the discs and brings fluid and nutrients into discs and joints and done in combination, that those things are great. We don't offer that in our facility. We refer it out. But those things are, are great as, as well as strengthening and stretching. So it's an overall program that has to be done regarding chronic and severe back pain. Yeah, you guys just have a lot of stuff there and a lot of visco supplementation, stem cell, PRP, genetic of the nerve blocks. It, there, there, there's a lot of stuff there um, that, you know, a patient can come in and they can get they can get a screening for free and 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 then they can know if if, hey, you know, here's here's a plan of action for you. And um, I, you know, I know you're also we've talked about this quite quite a bit that um, you're really into trying to save, not only get rid of back pain, knee pain, and, th and this stuff, and re really help, help them, but, but you're also trying to eliminate the stress and strain, but you're also trying to save them time and money too, you know? Um, um, how, how, how can NYC Pain MD save not only a patient, but, but the entire healthcare system time and money? Right. Yeah, that, that's a great question, and I think it's a question that's ignored by providers a little bit, and some of them don't know what to do about it, but we did talk about one of them, the absolute severe cost of doing procedures in a fancy hospital suite uh, or a fancy surgery center. We're, we know hospitals do great jobs. Surgery centers play a very important role when necessary, but there's so many procedures that do not require that level of sophistication when doing um, a minimally invasive interventional procedure. 
I mean, we've even heard of where they put people under general anesthesia to do a simple visco supplementation to a hip, ankle, or shoulder. I find that, pro frankly, preposterous. This is very expensive. It's several thousand dollars or more in many cases. And so this costs the system quite a bit of money. As you know, uh, with deductibles going up and patients' coinsurances, meaning their responsibility, this is particularly important to patients because it costs them. And patients are working hard and there's no need for these things. This is completely over the top. It's very, very unsettling that this is the way this is handled. And um, uh, I, I, that's why we, the way we set it up, you know, we, we almost call it, I, I've taken to calling it trying to create an Amazon effect, like Amazon, the, the company that delivers all those goods. And you know, Amazon's goal is to get it to you as quickly as possible for the best price possible. Not as slowly with the most people in the way and the most congestion and the highest expense, but at a great price, very fast. It's amazing they can deliver something to you. You could order it today and have it at your doorstep tomorrow. Now, unfortunately, with healthcare, there's a lot of delicate health issues. Um, there's risk involved. So we can't quite make it that fast, but we want to try to take all that friction out of there. It's so uncomfortable. I mean, when you come somewhere in pain, I mean, if you went to your dentist with a toothache, would you want to have to go to 10 different centers or to one other different center when you're right there and you're hurting? You're like, come on, man, fix me now or make me feel better now. And that's, we're trying to get as close as we can as possible to that. And, and it's important for a patient to have a good experience. Getting healthcare is a bad experience now. It's really, really gotten to be so complex. The insurance companies are creating all sorts of inappropriate blockades. They're making record profits. And so and then you have the insurance company in a way, and it's an endless system. That's why, by the way, you talk about how to make it easier for a patient. We have great insurance department and we go to work as quickly as possible, getting things pre-authorized, getting verifications, getting you the best coverage that we can for the procedures and try to make it as easy as possible in all angles of providing the care. Yeah, it's, it's really important. I, I really believe, and we've, we've, we've talked about this a lot and I think the people should really understand this, what I'm going to say here, th this is really important that there's a common belief that, that you can even either have something inexpensive or good. Meaning um, it, if you're going to get something good and you're going to get some, something for top quality, it's going to be expensive. And if it's not expensive, it's going to be cheap. And, um, People justify things, you know, um, the doctors can charge a lot of money because they're going to say that, that I'm, I'm really good. I'm the best, whatever it is they say. And the care is really, really good. Therefore, we can charge a higher price. And you guys have come along and you really, I believe this is coming from me, revolutionize things because what you guys do is, is you guys, as far as I'm concerned, are giving are giving top quality as care as best they can possibly get, but you're but you're also charging a fair price, and you're not trying to just ju justify the fact because you guys are so good, you can you can charge whatever whatever it is you want. So so it's it's really this new concept of look, you know, um, you you can get the best care there is, and we're going to give it to you at at a reasonable reasonable price and and then and then you just said about the hospitals and stuff you're not going to have all all of those fees and that's one of the reasons why you guys can give it at a price most most people can afford i'm assuming you know so right, right. I'm, I'm not sure if you want to if you want to discuss that but yeah. but that seems to me to be really revolutionary and hopefully health healthcare in the future goes down this road where it's not just you know uh, um, you know, people have sometimes life threatening conditions and you're not seeing those, of course, but they go to a doctor because they have to be, be because they have cancer and this and that. And, and they're whacked with this enormous bill because they have to be there. They're captive, you know, um, and, and a system's really gotten at, at a control with all of these costs and stuff. And most doctors are they're really trying to do the best they possibly can for patients, but but it's a 
it's an out of control system. And you guys, you really found a little pocket here where you can where you can offer offer the best, and and it's really average average Joes for the most part have an opportunity to do this. It's awesome, right? Right. Well, I think there's a couple mantras there. You know, you you can't have an office uh, or a medical facility that's only kind of for the rich and famous because most people aren't famous and most people aren't rich. They they work hard and they need to have a reasonable cost of a service. At the end of the day, you know, uh, physicians and medical care, it's just a service. It's just uh, a plumber's a service, an electrician. Uh, these Those people are skilled also, but it's a service that people need. Um, these The doctors are amazingly trained and spend a decade of their life having the right to get licensed and train and so forth. Um, but there's no reason for cost to be egregious. One of the things I uh, scoff at is sometimes I hear, well, oh, they, they cover that. So let's do it. You know, just because an insurance covers, it doesn't mean you should go ahead and do a particular test or procedure. You have to do what the patient needs regardless. And then you can kind of figure out how to get reimbursed fairly. So while it's revolutionary, maybe in medicine, I think that the word you're looking for is this consumerism has struck medicine. Uh, they're consumers of a product and a consumer has the right to decide whether the price is reasonable and fair or justified um, or, or whether it's not. And uh, a, another thought is, you know, one I once read in a book where they said the definition of happiness is when reality exceeds your expectations. Like I was sort of an average basketball player, but if I turned into like half of a Michael Jordan, I would have been thrilled because my uh, expectations would have so far exceeded my reality. But the reality was I wasn't too good but anything I achieved was was great. It's like, or if you find your favorite item on sale, your reality exceeds your expectations. You spent less money for a great item. And so that's kind of what we try to do. We want to exceed your expectations. We want you to have a great experience and hopefully get the best results. Nobody's happy if you don't get good results. And that's why, again, going back to the formula, we want to pick and choose the right candidates for treatment so they have a happy outcome. But you know, hopefully you know, other clinics will follow this. And we think that people deserve to be treated fairly. And uh, some of the stuff that goes on is, in, in my opinion, egregious and inappropriate. Uh, and, and it's also on the part of the insurance carriers. Lately, we have patients coming in with huge deductibles, uh, and it costs them more and more. Well, their cost should go down when their deductibles and their out-of-pocket costs are go up. We have CEOs of major insurance companies making tens of millions of dollars, and they don't have any risk like the doctors or the patients. And they're just pocketing all this money, and frankly, it's 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 a little disturbing. But yeah, I yeah, I, I, I was in, a little. no way if, implying that the doc the doctors are 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 just gou gouging and it's not be, be because because like you said that that you know that they've gone to a ton ton of skill. They have student loan. I mean, I mean, you know, the debt that they went into um, financially and emotionally and time right. invested, incredible. And you know, it's kind of like what came first, a chicken. Or the egg with 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 this whole insurance system and cost it, spi it spirals out of control. And at this right. point, you know what do you do? And, and like I said, you guys found this little pocket here. And and part part of the formula, I I also believe that we, that we didn't talk about yet. You've mentioned it to me before. Is is honesty? Um, you, you, I mean, I see some stuff and I see some ads and stuff. And some sometimes there's some a lot of claims and there's some promises and stuff. And, um, you guys are honest and, and patients come in and you sit them down and you say, look, here's, here's what you have. Here's what I believe we can do. And you don't stretch the truth. You, 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 you know, you, you guys aren't trying to convince a patient to stay. You guys are just let, letting them know what you honestly believe you can do. And if anything, you guys really, um, um, underestimate what, what you guys think you potentially can do. And, and like you were saying before that, um, that when you exceed expectations, when, when the results exceed expectations, that's happiness. And, and most of the time you guys tell a patient from what I've seen, 
um, much less than you really believe you can actually do for them. And then when the results come in, the patient is just ecstatic. Um, and that's also why I believe you guys get so many, so many referrals. Right. Um, every single day, the phone rings off, rings off the hook there for you guys with patients saying, hey, you know, you have to go see these guys because um, they're just, they're just, you know, the best. And when you start getting the referrals, that's when you really know you're doing something correct. Right. You know? and, and so you guys really are, are you, you guys really are honest and you're exceeding expectations. Right. I think one of the things in screening and the doctors and the providers that do those screenings is to let a patient know that there's every, there, there's no guarantee of any particular result. And there's three major variables. One is we don't know how fast you respond. Some people feel better like putting oil on a rusty hinge immediately. Others take a couple of days. Others don't feel their best for a while after treatment. Some don't respond nearly as well as we would like. So that's number one. Number two, you could respond 95%. You could respond 10%. Number three, this could last a couple of years before we need to see you again, maybe forever, hopefully. Uh, but some patients like to come in and tune up every six months, eight months, 12 months, like they go get a cleaning for their teeth. So we, we you have to manage someone's expectations. Uh, and I think you realize that we've talked about it. Some patients have ignored their particular pain or problem for so long. This gentleman, we were gave him as an example about his back pain. He's had chronic back pain for 25 years or more. And um, so he kind of ignored it for about 22 years. So over the last few years, he's gotten so bad, he started to attend to it. Now, by the time someone comes in with this bag of bones and skin around it called their body, these are difficult cases. A lot of these patients do better overall. But, you know, one of the things I hear the doc say is say, listen, you're 62 now. I think you could feel better and do better. I'm not sure you'll feel like you're 18 again. Um, and I think you're right. I think some of these articles and things people say make people, they put them under some uh, assurance that they're going to feel like they're teenagers, which is clearly not going to happen. So Yeah, I, I see advertisements about, you know, miracle cures and, and, and uh, o overnight successes and stuff. Is, and, and, and I've seen a lot of that with, with, with the stem cell stuff, you know, yeah. and, um, and there's actually some, you know, the, the government agencies and stuff, it looks like they're cracking down on some doctors who are, you know, making all kinds of claims, treating all kinds of things that they shouldn't treat with, with them. Um, I just read something about doctors injecting them into the eyes and some patients went blind. Now, I don't know the specifics of all of this and this and that, but um, people listening to this may have seen this, you know, Google it and look, um, but that's not what you guys are doing. No, right? our, and when our regenerative, uh, in our regenerative medicine programs, we only do uh, like orthopedic interventions, joints, ligaments, things like that. Um, injecting stem cells into an eye, it's way beyond my knowledge, but it sounds a, a little bit aggressive. I, I guess the real truth is uh, when anything sounds too good to be true, trust me, it's not true. <laughs> and uh, it, it, none of the things, nobody should in medicine try to promote anything as a magic. There is no magic wand, it's a human body. There's no magic wand. There's no, um, it's not magic pixie dust. Um, you have to be evaluated properly. And if you're getting that feeling from someone, I, I think it's time for you to rethink about who you're using. People should be conservative, uh, you know, uh, stayed in their approach. And uh, hopefully you, you'll get great results. There are patients, as you know, and I've told you about some cases, these look like excellent candidates for some reason. They didn't respond to what we had to offer. It does happen. There's no, nobody bats, you know, a thousand in the medical world and no one shoots a hundred percent and it's just impossible. No one completes every pass using all these sports analogies. And this does happen in medicine, but hopefully with the proper screening and being conservative and not over uh, estimating possible results, you know, we, we, make sure that our results are as good as can be for each and every patient. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the most difficult thing. And you talked about ma managing expectations before. And 
I think that a lot of patients really believe something about science and medicine that's that's inaccurate. They really think that um, science has all the answers and medicine, when there is a treatment, it 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 works the same way for everyone. And that's not the way things work. Um, any any medication, any drug, any of this stuff, patients are individual and patients have a different have a different response. And if you look at um, studies, drugs interact very, very differently with everyone. And, and, and what you're going to read is, you know, a drug may be successful if it helped 30 30 percent of of these people, you know. Um, so you really have to look at these things and say, how, how do you define success? But but the expectations have to be have to be met. And you guys are going to sit them down and explain to them, hey, this is actually how things work in the real in the real world here. Don't you know, you can't have this romantic picture of medicine and that you guys swoop in and wave this wand and all of their pain goes away. Right. And I think some there's something in the mix of um some of the less uh, healthy quote unquote formulas where it's sort of insinuated by medicine that do whatever you want to your body. We'll find some magic pill, potion, lotion, or some treatment that will unwind your, you know, bad behavior habits. And we probably should have a little webinar on, you know, taking care of yourself and those kind of things and what to do. But, um, so, but, but kind of getting back to the, the back pain, um, we do have a lot of success with many of these patients. Um, I know you're going to put up a, a special number where people can call um, to set up a screening. The way the screenings work is we do 99% of our back, uh, we call it our back clinic, is on Tuesdays all day at our downtown facility. We schedule from 8.30 to 5.30. The screening is done in absolutely no out-of-pocket cost. Um, and um, Sometimes there's several weeks waiting list for them. Sometimes not. Um, you can also email uh, our office email for questions is alex at nyc-painmd, alex at nyc-painmd.com. So if you have any specific questions, we can try to get back to you on that. But again, these screenings are the way to go. Um, a, a lot of patients ask about insurance. We have to call insurances individually because there's a lot of specific codes and diagnoses. So it's very hard to tell over the phone. That's why we offer the screening. It costs you absolutely nothing out of your pocket. And we always figure out the insurance. We have a fantastic insurance staff. And I know you have a, a lot of patients have a lot of individual concerns about back pain. So you're going to get all your questions answered. The doctors are thorough. They're going to answer all your questions. And, um, you know, there's no obligation. Uh, a lot of patients will go home and mull it over and decide what treatment they want to do or don't want to do. And uh, so it's nice and it's very thorough, but very casual and stress free. And most patients are pretty happy with the overall effect of the screenings. Awesome. Yeah. So so the numbers up on the screen, they can give that a call and they can get a free screening. They Correct. can e email d directly for questions or or just call. Um, best thing to do would be to call and um, we talked about a lot, a lot of stuff here. We kind of rambled on about, about a lot, but it was, yes. it was really good. Yeah, so important. right. Oh, one thing yeah. I want to say about the screenings is we do get an awful lot of calls to the office. I mean, there are times where we will literally get a hundred plus phone calls in a day. Um, and so we can't even put enough patient scheduling coordinators uh, in, in a facility, in a phone center facility to handle all of them sometimes. So you may get a message and it'll ask you to leave your name. Please leave your name and a time we can get back to you so we can get together and see what we can do to help you or schedule an appointment or send you some information. And that's another thing. We have information packets. We have a website. Maybe you could put that up if patients want to take a look at that. Talks about some of these things. Um, but if you call and we're not available, we're not ignoring you. It's just we're overwhelmed with calls. So please leave your your name, your number, and the best time to get back to you. Normally within 24 hours. Normally in the same day we'll get back to you, but certainly within 24 hours. And um, so we're going to make sure we get you the, uh, the information that you need. 
Awesome. Yeah, they can go to the website and they can get an information kit. Um, that's up there. The uh, the web website's up on the screen. And uh, great having you on again next week. We'll be on, on again, everybody. If you like these talks, um, information, subscribe to the YouTube and uh, hit the alerts button so that you're alerted when we put one up. We're putting up about, you know, one about a week. Um, and thank you again and give these guys a call and we'll talk to you next week. All right. Good enough. Thanks.